So this is our lecture on solution concentration. It's going to go over molarity, um, dilutions, and solution stoichiometry. Buckle up, it's 24 slides, so let's start the fun. So first we're going to recap what was in the online lecture from last night's homework. Just a little quick recap of what solutions are. Solutions are homogeneous mixtures. Um, <clears throat> they're aqueous, you know, there can be aqueous solutions, solutions that are um, dissolved in water, something's been dissolved in water. Homogeneous meaning that you can't see the parts, it's fully kind of enveloped in the other um, solution. So you're not going to see the little particles of salt in salt water solution. Um, remember solvent versus solute. The solute is the thing that's being dissolved. So if we're talking about salt water, it's going to be um, the NaCl crystals. And the solvent is something that is that does the dissolving. So it's um, the water molecules that are dissolving the crystal. So the water is the solvent. All right, and then it also went over the like dissolves like rule, which um, make, uh, if you remember, you know, stands for when we have um, substances that are like, for example, polar versus nonpolar. Polar substances, um, the ones that have partial charges at the ends, are going to be able to stick to and dissolve in um, other polar substances. But in terms of um, polar versus nonpolar, uh, you know, a polar substance cannot di dissolve in a nonpolar substance, and vice versa. So over here is a picture of um, we've got you know the I'll say the polar substance here being all stuck together and crowded um, and basically they're just kind of pushing out the nonpolar you know on the outside or vice versa you could say that the nonpolar is on the inside and the polar is on the outside either way you get a separation of the two types of mixtures all right so solutions can be made um, basically two different ways either by dissolving solids in water or by dissolving gases in water so let's talk about solids first so um, we've seen before that some substances are soluble versus uh, other substances that are insoluble. Soluble uh, substances will be able to dissolve in water and create these homogeneous mixtures or aqueous solutions, right? Insoluble substances won't dissolve in water and therefore just kind of sit there and probably fall to the bottom, all right, um, and just kind of sit there and they don't actually get dissolved. So. Um, in terms of solubility of a solution, um, there's kind of varying degrees of um, saturation. Saturation meaning, you know, is there more room for uh, molecules to get dissolved in water? So something that is unsaturated means that, you know, we add just a little bit of solute in there and there's plenty of more room um, or more uh, availability for that solute to dissolve. So, you know, We've kind of, you know, the, the water molecules haven't, there's more water molecules that can pull apart more solute if we added more. Okay, so that's unsaturated. Um, the next is um, saturated. So that means that, you know, this solution, we're adding enough salt in order to, you know, if that all of the little water molecules uh, are now, you know, grabbing and attaching to one of the salt um, ions. So saturated means like that's, as much possible, okay, that um, as much solute possible that you you can put in the solution, all right? But there is a um, way to get a solution that is super saturated. And super saturated means that it technically has more solute than should be able to dissolve. In order to get a saturated solution, typically you have to um, heat up the solvent um, and it will, um, be able to saturate, or I'm sorry, it'll be able to dissolve more solute than typically if it wasn't at a higher temperature. All right, so um, we've also seen in the past um, electrolytes versus non-electrolyte solutions, um, where electrolyte solutions, um, you know, if you put that in, um, if you, I'm sorry, if you hook up a, you know, a light bulb or, or a little electrode to it, it would um, conduct electricity. Right, so electrolyte solutions conduct electricity. We're going to do a lab after Thanksgiving um, to see that. And non-electrolyte um, solutions, non means don't, uh, don't conduct electricity. So there's going to be a difference um, in those types of solutions as well. Now, um, 
The second way to make a solution is to dissolve gas in water. And so um, you can think of, you know, good old Coke or any kind of soda can um, that has the carbon dioxide shoved and dissolved into the water um, that we can consider a solution. And so um, the solubility of gases increases with temperature and pressure. In fact, that's how um, they create, you know, or that's how they get the carbon dioxide in the water for soda is that um, they'll raise the temperature of the um, water that they are using and they'll pressurize it in order to get um, the carbon dioxide to kind of get in and amongst the water. So that's why, um, you know, when you pop the top of the can, you hear the psh, it's like the release of pressure and we're also gonna get some carbon dioxide release as well. All right, so when it comes to solutions, we can talk about um, solution concentration. Um, so some solutions will be dilute solutions. They contain a small amount of solute relative to the solvent. Um, and uh, other times you'll have a more concentrated solution, meaning that there's more, um, a larger amount of solute relative to the solvent. So if you think about it in terms of um, like Kool-Aid or um, you know any of those little powder packs that you can add to water, if you only add a little bit from the powder pack, it's not A, it's not going to taste very good, and B, it's because there's more water than there is sugar, so it's a dilute solution. Now, if you add like two or three packs to your water bottle, <laughs> then you're talking a concentrated solution. You've got a larger, much larger amount of that um, sugar solute relative to water. So you can even see it, you know, when you, when you do that, you can even kind of tell solution concentration with the color, um, a lighter color being dilute solutions and... Um, a darker color being concentrated solutions. So although um, that doesn't obviously um, happen with most solutions, um, a lot of solutions that we use in chemistry are colorless and so you can't really tell, you can't use um, the color in order to tell how uh, concentrated the solution is. So to figure out how concentrated a solution is, there's a couple of um, uh, things that we can, we can use. The first one is called mass percent. Okay, so mass percent is a common method of reporting solution concentration. It's basically the mass of the solute over the mass of the whole solution. So here's our react or not our reaction, our equation here, where you've got the mass of the solute on top, and then um, if you add the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent um, as like the total mass of the solution. Um, then you've got that on the bottom and you, you know, multiply it by 100 to get a mass percent. So it's almost like saying it's, you know, the, the grams of solute per 100 grams of solution, you know, 100 being the full 100 percent. So let's work with an example here of mass percent. So it says, suppose you want to calculate the mass percent of sodium chloride in a solution containing 15.3 grams of sodium chloride and 155.0 grams of water. All right, so we gotta figure out the mass percent. Again, here is your um, equation for that. We have the mass of the solute versus both the solute and the solvent. So um, we've got the mass of the solute here. We're gonna plug that in up on top. We have 15.3 grams of sodium chloride. And then we are also given the mass of the solvent. We have 155.0 grams of water. So we have to add those together to get the mass of the whole solution. Because remember the solution is the not just the water, but the water and the salt. So that's a, a total of 170.3 grams. So if we do you know 15.3 and divide it by 170.3, um, we're going to get a uh, percentage of 8.98%. Um, and so that what that means is that in that solution, we have 8.98% um, sodium chloride by mass. All right, so here's another example um, for you guys to try. So you guys can pause the, the video and um, take a look at this one and then unpause it when you guys are ready for the solution, um, meaning the correct answer. Ha. Huh. All right, so this one says calculate the mass percent of a solution containing 27.5 grams of ethanol and 175 milliliters of water. Assume the density of water is 1.0 grams per milliliter. So, of course, this is not going to be as easy as the examples. These you try it ones never are. And so um, what you'll have to do 
is we've got um, the amount of solute here, 27.5 grams of ethanol, and we have the solvent, but <laughs> instead of giving you just the grams of water, we've given you the volume and we've given you the density. So guess what? You will have to do the density equation in order to find the mass, which then you can plug into your mass percent, right? Um, percent mass equation. So go ahead and pause it here. Uh, take a few minutes to um, figure it out and then you can unpause it and see if you did it right. All right, so hopefully you got 13.6%. When you plug in um, the volume and the density to the mass, or I'm sorry, to the density equation, you should have gotten a mass of water of 175 grams. When we plug it into the mass percent um, equation here, um, we're going to get the uh, grams of the solute, the ethanol of 27.5, um, divided by the total mass of the whole solution, so the water plus the ethanol, which is 202.5. And then when you take the percentage of that, you should have gotten 13.6%. So this should be of no surprise by now, but we can use this mass percent of a solution as a conversion factor between the mass of the solute and the mass of the solution. We've seen something earlier um, with this, with percent um, of mass composition, when we were talking about, you know, how much um, sodium in sodium chloride and whatnot, uh, we could use that as a conversion factor in this the same way. So. Um, we could basically say, hey, we've got grams of solute versus 100 grams of the solution. So we can use that as a conversion factor. Here's an example. If a solution contains 3.5% sodium chloride, then we can use these as conversion. We can use that as a conversion factor. Basically, what that means is that you've got 3.5 over 100, right? So 3.5 grams of NaCl over 100 grams of the whole solution. So if you need to convert grams to uh, grams of solution to grams of NaCl, you could use uh, this conversion factor here. Or if you need to do it the other way, you need to convert grams of NaCl to grams of solution, then you would just use the bottom um, one where the 100 grams is on top and the 3.5 grams is on the bottom. So let's take a look at an example here. It says a sample from Lake Nyos contains 8.5% carbon dioxide by mass. Determine how much carbon dioxide in grams is contained in 28.6 liters of uh, the water solution. So we're gonna assume the density of the solution is 1.03 grams per milliliter. All right, so what are we gonna do first? Um, well, we're given um, liters of our solution. We can convert that to um, milliliters of the solution. We can plug it into our um, density equation, or we could just use um, the density equation as a conversion factor to get to grams of solution. And then from grams of solution, we could use our um, percent composition in order to get finally grams of carbon dioxide. So let's see how this is going to work. So we're going to start off with our uh, liters of solution. And in order to be able to use our density um, as a conversion factor, we need to turn liters into milliliters. So we know that uh, 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. That should say uh, one liter of solution. Oh, I see the spacing is a little off. So here's your liters down here. Um, in your printed notes, it should be just fine. So we're going to um, basically are going to get rid of liters of solution um, by converting it to milliliters. And now once we have the milliliters of solution, we can use the density in order to um, convert milliliters to grams. So we'll have you know 1.03 grams on top um, and one milliliter on the bottom. And that's going to cancel out uh, the milliliters and milliliters. So now we're in grams of solution. And so the last little part is now that we've got grams of solution, we can use our um, percent composition of carbon dioxide in order to get to grams of carbon dioxide. So we know that it's 8.5%. 
So that means um, for every 100 grams of solution, we have 8.5 grams of carbon dioxide. So we're gonna use that as a conversion factor. So we have our 8.5 grams of carbon dioxide in the bottom and 100 grams of solution on top. That will cancel the other grams. And so um, when we do all of the math, we'll end up with 2,500 grams of carbon dioxide in the water. All right, so here's another example that you guys are gonna try. Um, a soft drink contains 11.5% sucrose, C12H22O11, by mass. What volume of soft drink solution in milliliters contains 85.2 grams of sucrose? All right, and so we're going to, because we're um, asked to find the milliliters, we're gonna need to use density as a conversion factor as well. So the density, we're going to assume the density of this soft drink is 1.04 grams per milliliter. All right, so think about um, the steps that you need to take, why you're gonna start, what you need to end up with, and go ahead and pause this, try it and see, and then you can unpause it to see if you did it correctly. All right, so hopefully you started with the 85.2 grams of sucrose. And um, the first thing we're going to use is the conversion factor with the percent mass. Um, so we've got 11.5% sucrose by mass. And so what that means is we've got 11.5 grams of sucrose and 100 grams of the solution. So we're going to use that as a convert conversion factor in order to cancel the grams and the grams. So now that we've got uh, grams of solution, we can use the density in order to get to milliliters of solution because 1.04 grams is equivalent to one milliliter. Um, so in the end, you should have gotten 712 milliliters of soft drink. So um, when you, uh, you know, open up your two liter bottle and you pour yourself about 712 milliliters of that soda, which is like a little more than half a liter, that's a lot of soda. Uh, you've just consumed 85.2 grams of sugar. Yum. All right. Let's take a, take a look at a second way in order to um, specify solution concentration. And that is called molarity. So we have percent mass, um, which is the percentage by mass in a solution. And now we've got this thing um, called molarity. So molarity is the second way to express solution concentration. And it is, cons um, it is uh, basically stated as moles of the solute versus over liters of solution. So here is the equation for molarity, moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So this is um, what we use most of the time in chemistry and in your labs and all that stuff in order to um, indicate the concentration of a solution. So the more molarity, the more moles of solute versus liters of solution. Um, the less molarity that you see on the bottles, the less solute that's in there. All right, so this picture down here is just kind of showing you, uh, you know, that we can use molarity in order to make certain concentration solutions in the chem lab. So let's see how this works. Here's an example. It says calculate the molarity of sucrose solution made with 1.5 moles of sucrose diluted to a volume of 5 liters of solution. So molarity is super simple. It's just moles divided by liters. So we have the moles of sucrose and we're given the liters of solution. You just divide the two and end up with your molarity. So in this case, it's a pretty dilute solution. 0.32 molarity. And you can kind of tell that because like 1.5 moles in 5 liters of solution, that's a whole lot of volume. So um, it's not going to be very concentrated at all. So you guessed it. Here's another you try it. Um, practice problem, calculate the molarity of a solution made by putting 15.5 grams of sodium chloride into a beaker and adding water to make 1.5 liters of sodium chloride solution. So of course it's not going to be exactly like the example we just did. In fact, here we're given grams instead of moles. So by now it should be second nature converting grams to moles. Um, so you're going to do that and then plug it into your equation. So go ahead and pause and take a few minutes to um, solve the equation or solve the problem and then we'll take a look and see if you did it correct. 
All right, did you do it right? You should have ended up with 0.177 molarity solution. So we take our grams of sodium chloride and turn it to moles, right? So by using our periodic table as a conversion factor, uh, you get 0.265 moles of NaCl. And then we'll plug it into our molarity um, equation here, moles divided by liters. So 0.265 divided by one and a half gives you 0.177 molarity. <laughs> All right, one more time, guys. Uh, guess what? We can use molarity as a conversion factor between moles and liters of a solution because remember molarity is just moles divided by liters so if we have the number of moles in one liter that can be used as a conversion factor so here's an example if a 0.5 molarity NaCl um, solution contains 0.5 moles of NaCl for every one liter of solution Right? We can use that as a conversion factor. If we want to convert liters of solution to moles of NaCl, okay, we will um, use this one here with the 0.5 um, moles on top and the liters on the bottom so that they cancel whatever we were just you know, in. And then, um, or if we need to convert moles of NaCl to liters of solution, we could use the second one where the liters are on top and the moles are on the bottom to cancel out whatever moles we started with. So see, we can use molarity as a conversion factor um, in lots of situations because it just uh, is means that it's the moles of solute per liter of solution. So let's take a look at an example. It says, determine how many grams of sucrose are contained in 1.7 liters of 0.758 molarity sucrose solution. So if we take a look and we kind of think this through, we are going to need to start with our liters of solution and we can use the molarity, right? So use molarity um, in order to convert it to the moles of sucrose. Okay, and then when, once we have moles, we can get grams by blinking our eyes. I mean, it's that simple, right? Hopefully by now it should be that simple for you. Um, so we'll use our periodic table here in order to convert moles to grams. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. If we take a look down here, we start out with our liters of solution, 1.72 liters. Um, we know the molarity. The molarity is 0.758 molarity. So that means there's 0.758 moles of sucrose in one liter of solution. Again, in this slide, it's a little off. In your notes, it should be perfect. Um, so that's going to cancel our liters of solution units. And then once we've got the moles of sucrose, we can convert it to grams of sucrose right, um, by using our periodic table. If we add up 12 C's, 22 H's, and 11 O's, we're going to get 342.34 grams of sucrose per mole. And so those moles are going to cancel, and we're going to end up with our answer, which is 446 grams of sucrose. All right, you guessed it. It's another you try it. So here we go. How many liters of a 0.11 molarity NaOH solution contains 1.24 moles of NaOH? All right, so if we're given molarity, then basically this number here, if that's the molarity, that's going to be your conversion factor. So take a few minutes, pause, and um, solve the problem, and then you can see if you did it right. All right, how'd you do? How'd you do? Did you get 10.9 liters? Hopefully you did. Um, here's what we, here's how we solve that. So we're going to start off um, with the moles of NaOH, right? So we identified this as molarity as our conversion factor. So we're not going to start with that. We're going to start with the other guy, um, moles of NaOH, and then we'll use our molarity as a conversion factor. So remember, molarity is moles per one liter. So that means if we have a 0.114 molarity NaOH solution, it means that there's 0.114 moles in one liter of the solution. So we can use that as a conversion factor. And then once we do the math, we'll end up with our answer of 10.9 liters. 
All right, so let's take a look um, specifically at some certain types of um, solutions that we can have. So, um, you know, versus basically um, ionic, you know, type of substances versus molecular types of substances. So the concentration of a solution containing a molecular compound, remember that means non-metal compounds, right? Um, so non-metals. Uh, H2O, CO2, like any of those um, that are non-metal combinations. Um, so the, the concentration of a solution containing a molecular compound usually, usually reflects the concentration of the solute as it actually exists in solution. Meaning that, remember, molecular compounds are not going to break apart into ions because they're not ionic. They are molecular. They hold together um, a lot better. So um, when we say that a 1.0 molarity uh, glucose contains one mole of glucose per liter, it is what it is, okay? Um, now, on the other hand, ionic compounds, right, are made up of metals and non-metals, okay, which break apart into ions in solution. So this is our metal and non-metal combos. So those guys, um, we just talked about the very beginning of this um, lecture, that those guys, um, water's gonna break them apart, okay, into their ions. So a concentration of a solution containing ionic compounds actually reflects the concentration before it is dissolved in solution. Okay, so um, here we've got one molarity of calcium chloride actually contains one mole of the calcium ion per liter and two moles of the chlorine ion per liter, right? Um, because we got to take a look at the actual um, formula, right? In this compound, we've got one calcium. So if we have one um, mole of calcium chloride, that means we have one mole of calcium ions. And we have two moles of, or so we have two chlorine atoms in this compound. So if we've got one mole of calcium chloride, then technically we have two moles of the calcium, I'm sorry, not the calcium, the chloride ion. So this is the same thing that we've talked about um, earlier in I think unit one or two when we were talking about um, mass percent composition within a compound, okay? so. Hopefully this does not look new to you, but it's just kind of a reminder. So when we're working with concentration of a solution of an ionic compound, that concentration reflects the concentration before it gets dissolved in the solution. So let's see what this means then. So we've got an example. Determine the molecular, I'm sorry, the molar concentration, meaning the molarity. Molar concentration is the same as molarity. Right, so determine the molarity of um, sodium ion and phosphate ions in a 1.5 molarity sodium phosphate solution. So remember, 1.5 molarity is the solution, or I'm sorry, the molarity of the solution before it gets dissolved. So when it gets dissolved, we're going to be breaking apart this ionic substance, right? And here we've got three sodium ions, right, um, versus one PO4 group, right? Remember that's guys a polyatomic ion. So we got one PO4 group and we've got three sodium ions. So when we try to figure out the solution of the parts, we have to keep that in mind. So the molarity of sodium is not just gonna be the 1.5, but there's three um, sodium ions in there. So we have to multiply the molarity by three. So the molarity of the sodium ions are actually 4.5 molarity because we've got three of those ions that are going to be um, dispersed in the solution once it's all stirred together um, and broken apart. <clears throat> now the phosphate ion, okay, um, there's only you know one of those in that um, compound. And so because there's only one, we're going to do 1 times the molarity, 1.5. So in here, we've got the molarity of the phosphate ion being the 1.5 molarity. 
So here's an example for you guys to try. Go ahead and um, read through it and pause and then see if you came up with the correct answer. All right, take a look and see if you got it right. Hopefully you guys identified the molarity of the um, calcium ion as being 0.75. Okay, in this solution, um, we have one calcium ion in the in the compound. All right, and so one times 0.75 molarity is 0.75 molarity. Um, on the other hand, we've got um, two chlorine ions in this compound, and so we have to multiply the molarity by two in order to get the all of the molarity for the calcium ions. So two, I'm sorry, chlorine ions. So two times 0.75 is a 1.5 molarity of chloride ions. All right, so hopefully those two um, ways of saying the concentration of solutions um, make sense to you, the percent mass and the molarity. Um, now what we're going to do is talk about solutions that are already in the solution like liquid state, but we need to maybe dilute them. Okay, so um, this happens a lot in, well, I do this all the time when I'm making acids. Um, a lot of the acids come in a more concentrated liquid form, and so I have to dilute them to whatever uh, you know concentration that we need in a particular lab. So I do this constantly. This is what we call um, solution dilution. So stock solutions are solutions of a stored uh, you know stored concentrations, um, higher concentrations typically, and so in order to you know use the solution in in a particular um, concentration that we need, we're going to need to dilute it. And so this works by this equation here. So we've got a lot of equations in this um, lecture, so hopefully you guys can keep them straight. Um, when to use molarity, when to use mass percent, when to use um, dilution. So here is M1 V1 equals M2 times V2. And so the ones um, I usually you know, say, hey, that's the stock solution information. And then the two side is the dilution side um, of the information. All right, so let's take a look at an example as we walk through how to use this equation. So it says a lab procedure calls for five liters of a 1.5 molarity uh, KCL solution. How do you prepare the solution from a 12 molarity stock solution? Okay, so basically what we need to know is how much stock solution do we need in order to make five liters of this 1.5 molarity solution, right? So our M1s, remember, is the stock side. And our twos is the, um, the new, you know, diluted side. Right, so we're gonna plug in the information that we need on the correct sides. So for the stock solution, we are given the molarity, but we don't know how much to use. That's what we need to um, figure out, right? So V1 is gonna stay as a variable. And then on the other side, we have um, our, we are given our volume of the new solution and we're given the molarity of the new solution. So we'll plug both of those into those variables right there. All right, so when we um, solve for V1, we do a little algebra, solve for V1, we're gonna end up with um, an answer of 0.625 liters, okay? So what that means is that you need to pour out, from your stock solution, you need to pour out 0.625 liters, right? That's the same as 625 milliliters. So you pour out 625 milliliters of your stock solution, and then you need to add um, water to get up to your full volume of five liters, right? So we would, you know, pull out the 625 milliliters and then add like whatever the 4,375 milliliters of water in order to make the full five liter mark. So have, getting your answer is kind of only partially the full answer because you need to make sure that you understand that the you know that's how much stock you need and then you need to fill the rest up with water to get to your final volume um, that is that is required. So here's an example for you guys to try. Um, go ahead and read through this, pause, and then you can unpause to see if you got it correct. All right, so 
Um, this one could, this question, how it's asked is, can be kind of a little tricky, um, to figure out which is the stock versus which is the, um, the, the new solution. So you do want to make sure that you, um, take careful notice of the verbal, like syntax cues as to which is the before the stock solution, which is, which is the after, which is, um, the new solution. So you know, the keywords kind of here is to obtain. So that means, you know, you're going to get the solution, the 1.0 molarity solution in the end. So that would mean that that part is the new or the dilute. That's your, your two side, right? Um, so that means that this here is what you start with. So that's your, you know, one side, your M1 and your V1. Um, so you do need to make sure, like if you read it through the first time, you're like confused um, as to which numbers belong where, um, typically they're, you know, given as kind of a set. So, you know, 0.1 liters of a 15 molarity solution that kind of goes together. So you're going to put those on one side, um, and to figure out what side you put it on, you know, take a look at those keywords like to obtain or to get, or, you know, that kind of thing. So hopefully you got in the end 1.5 liters. All right, so the final um, kind of topic in this lecture is solution stoichiometry um, because a lot of chemical reactions take place in the aqueous solutions. So um, we've seen it before, a lot of double replacement reactions are gonna be two liquids that you're mixing together to make something new, right? Um, so precipitation reactions, neutralization reactions between acids and bases, and then even some where you're mixing two solutions and you get gas um, bubbles um, happens. And so those guys are in you know, uh, aqueous solutions. So we can use the molarity as a conversion factor uh, between volume and moles for aqueous substances and reactions. So uh, basically what this means is that if you start out with a certain volume, you can use molarity in order to get to moles of that um, solution and then you know you could use your uh, mole ratio here from the equation or from the reaction equation you can use your use your mole ratio to go from moles of a to b and then again you can use the molarity um, to go from moles to volume of solution b so let's see how this works in real life so this example um, gives us a reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide um, in order to make sodium sulfate and water. Okay, so this is a neutralization reaction between an acid and a base. We've got a balanced chemical equation here, all right, and so we're going to use that in order to um, help answer the question. How much 0.125 molarity NaOH solution do we need to completely neutralize 0.225 liters of a one or 0.175 molarity um, sulfuric acid solution. So the words how much indicate volume, right? So we're gonna need to figure out the volume, like the liters um, of this NOA, NaOH solution in the end. So we have to start with where we're given. So we're going to start with uh, what we're given is the liters and the molarity. Molarity, remember, can always be used as a conversion factor. So we're never going to start with molarity. We'll start with the other piece of information, the liters. So we have 0.225 liters of sulfuric acid, and we can use the molarity right, as a conversion factor to convert to moles of um, our sulfuric acid. And then we can use our mole ratio from the equation right up here um, in order to go from moles of H2SO4 to moles of, uh, uh, let's see, NaOH. Okay, so that's a one to two ratio. Um, and then we can again use molarity, since we're given the molarity of the NaOH solution in the end, we could use molarity to figure out the number of liters. And so this down here, this is what it looks like down here um, when we're, you know, kind of writing out all of the um, conversions. So we'll start up, out with the 0.225 liters, um, cancel the liters uh, as we use molarity, which is the 0.175 moles per one liter. Um, <clears throat> then we have to take a look at the ratio. It's a two to one ratio, like we said. So two moles of NOH to one mole of H2SO4. 
And then finally, we'll use the molarity of the NO NaOH solution in order to convert from moles to liters. Since uh, 0.125 molarity means the same thing as 0.125 moles in one liter, we can use that as a conversion factor to get the liters in the end. And when you do the math, you get 0 0.630 liters of the NaOH solution. All right, so you guessed it. Here's one for you to try. It says consider the precipitation reaction. Potassium iodide and lead nitrate to react to form potassium, I'm sorry, <laughs> lead iodide and potassium nitrate. So here's your question. How much 0.115 molarity Ki solution in liters will completely precipitate the uh, lead ion um, in 0.104 liters of 0.225 molarity lead nitrate solution? Okay. All right, so go ahead and pause it, spend a few time with it. Um, you may need to work with a partner with this. This is, um, you know, I don't know, maybe tricky um, in a sense of how it's worded. Okay, but see if you can figure out. We're gonna need to figure out how much in liters you need to end up with liters of Ki in the end. So go ahead and pause it and um, see if you can figure it out. All right, hopefully you guys ended up with 0.407 liters of Ki. So again, um, like we did with the previous one, we'll start out with our liters of um, lead nitrate solution. Use the molarity to find the moles of um, the lead nitrate. You could even, you know, kind of rationalize with the um, the uh, what you want to call it the ions that you know because we've got one mole of PbNO3 two. You know, for one mole of that, there's one mole of um, the PB ions. This part is kind of, you know, optional. But um, we'll use the next, we will use the uh, mole ratio, right, from the equation here to plug in to switch from moles of um, lead to moles of Ki. And then finally, we'll use the molarity that we're given to go back down to liters. So when we do all that, we should end up with 0 0.407 liters of potassium iodide solution. All right, so here is one more um, for you guys to try. So how many milliliters of a 0 0.112 molarity sodium carbonate solution will completely react with 27.2 milliliters of a 1.35 molarity nitric acid solution according to the reaction? So again, take um, a few minutes to read through it, to work it out, and then unpause it when you're done to see if you did it correct. All right, so hopefully you ended up with 16.4 milliliters. And uh, that concludes our 24 slide adventure of stoichiometry, dilutions, molarity, all the solution stoichiometry stuff. So if you have any questions, make sure you come see me um, next class um, and or in uh, future classes before we have a quiz or a test on this. In the meantime, you're going to practice some of these on a socrative and um, get some more practice. All right, we'll see you later.